Welcome to today's episode of Sassy Detectives. We're your hosts, Tori and Ray. We are here to talk about anything and everything Nancy Drew, and today we'll be talking about the Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys Super Mystery Terror on Tour. Roll the intro! Okay, we did so another book. book. <laughs> I like our book episodes. I, I think they're fun. Yeah, they're fun, and they're a lot less um, game, you know, gameplay focus. So, like, we're just focusing on basically the plot. We don't have to go like, oh, music, oh, the puzzles. We're just right. like, yeah, it's it's a book, and it is a wild book <laughs> at that. <laughs> this book, um. I- as I was reading it, there were multiple times where I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a fun read. Yeah. And it only took me like a couple total hours. I think I read the whole thing in like two and a half hours. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> it's super, it's a breeze to get through, which honestly right now is a breath of fresh air because I'm also reading a Game of Thrones right now. And so that Very is- different. Very different, a very hard read, and I'm reading it also with the audiobook, and the audiobook is over 34 hours long. Oh my god! <laughs> and the book itself is like a chunky brick, so <laughs> this is a well-needed breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, it is a chunky book, and this is just, it's a short, sweet, and really weird book, but you know, it's middle grade, so yeah. But anyways, shall we get on to discussing the plot? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it starts out... So this is in... So Frank and Joe are ATAC agents, and we've uh, talked about this in the games before, I think. Um, like, did we do... Um, did we do train yet? No. Or, yeah, we did. Did we? We did do... Yeah. Wow, look at me and, knowing, remembering yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, but we, um, yeah, we have that. Uh, but they also mention ATAC and that, which is American Teens Against Crime, which their dad helped um, found and stuff. But anyway, so it start. The book starts out with Frank and Joe being held hostage by at gunpoint, and by drug dealers who are apparently trying to sell drugs to elementary schoolers. And I'm just going to say that is a terrible business plan. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Like, first of all, you got to have customers that are going to buy your stuff. Where are elementary schoolers getting the money? Um, like (laughs) lunch money? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Where are elementary schoolers getting it? I don't want chicken nuggies today. I want drugs. (laughs) (laughs) But it's just, it's a wild business plan because it's like, You know, this is the kind of thing that my mom would have told me back in the day. It's like, don't talk to anybody other than me because they're going to try to sell you drugs. And, like, I'm I'm really sure that's not the the biggest problem I'm going to have with a stranger as a kid, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I think kidnapping um, is probably actually a higher risk, but, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, Frank and Joe are currently kidnapped. Yay. And... Oh, yeah, we have a bald man spotlight, I guess, because one of the guys who's kidnapping them is short, skinny, and bald, so there's our bald man spotlight. Um, But then, basically, they're like, oh, we're gonna try to get out, and then eventually a pizza guy comes, and they're like, a pizza guy? We didn't order pizza, and of course, it is another one of their friends from ATAC who comes and rescues them. Yay! Yay. And so he's like, yeah, we, we got you out, and... And they're like, oh, but he's going to take the credit for saving us and stuff, which, you know, whatever. Um, but then, so he's like, oh, here, here's the the, the mission disc for your next mission with ATAC. Because <laughs> he just has it in the pizza box. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to me. It's just like a CD. Yeah, it's just like a CD in a little CD case. But then when they... Later on, when they put it in and stuff, they get, like, these little, um... They put it in, like, a, their PlayStation or whatever. Yeah! <laughs> but they also have, like, in the CD case, there are these little mini cattle prods that are given to them to help with the mission. But I'm just like, how does that fit into a, a jewel case? Like, good question. Those are, 
Like, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I was just saying that's a good question. Yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're, are they flat like credit cards? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, they said they looked like mint containers and I'm just thinking of like those little Altoid mints things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how, I don't think that can fit in there. And like, I read this book a lot when I was a kid. And so like with literally all Nancy Drew books, I read them religiously. But I remember always wondering how did that work? Like, how did they put that in the CD case, because that's logistically, um, and then they put that underneath the pizza, and so I just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So anyway, there's that, and um, it's a dual POV, not dual trio, trio, tri trip, triple POV. Try I guess. POV. I don't know, but I Try, get yeah. excessively confused at multiple times because I forgot. <laughs> point of view i was in and yeah. i was like what is going on right now yeah. and then i'd have to go I, back to the <laughs> beginning of the chapter to remember who i was reading as i got that a few times but normally with with you can tell apart frank and joe it's just harder to tell apart like frank and nancy i guess mm -hmm. and sometimes nancy and joe but you can easily tell apart frank and joe because um joe is super horny and frank is not so <laughs> I, it's so yeah, funny. Everybody in this, well, not everybody, it's, a lot of characters uh, in this book are really thirsty and desperate like, for romance. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I um, it, it's very weird. Like the, some of the newer Nancy Drew Joe. series, I'm like, what is going, why is this spicy? No, like the, the 90s ones were wild though. Cause some mm -hmm, of the things right. like, or like not even that, just. Just like, stay tuned for danger. Yeah, that the book. Can kill book is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, okay. So I'm Worse also currently, I'm also currently reading another Nancy Drew Hardy Boy super mystery. Oh, um, which one? I've just been reading it in my in my free time. I've been reading Tropic of Fear. And, oh, and, uh, I remember that one. And in a chapter I just read, like just finished, Joe tries to distract this girl, so he literally just starts kissing on her neck. And I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> is Frank disgusted with it? They're not. They're separated. So Frank doesn't uh, well, witness this. But otherwise, Frank probably Frank. would have vomited. <laughs> Frank is me. Frank is me. <laughs> yeah, Frank probably would have puked. I don't know. This this is also a very de desperate book. Thirsty, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very thirsty. Um, anyway, so we have three points of view and we ha but then we have so it's first it's joan then it's nancy and nancy is at the ball with bess george and ned and they're like oh yeah we're just hanging out bess is taking a long time with shopping which wow we're so surprised at but honestly it's like she deserves it um and ned comes by and he's like hey i just got us all tickets for rockapamooza which is the funniest <laughs> title for a Rock -a concert thing ever rock a Pazuma. I can't, yeah, I can't do Rock -a words. rock it's, it's the, um, knockoff rock oh. concert that is, like, Lollapalooza, but not as cool. Yeah. And also, probably a lot shadier, um, <laughs> given the context of the book. True. But, anyway, so we have Ned, Bez, and George, and Nancy at the mall, and they're talking about that, and then Deirdre comes along, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm, like totally going i have vip tickets because i'm like besties with kijani i think that's how you pr pronounce your name yeah, the lead would, singer of royal so, kijani yeah and they're like oh wow that i totally believe that and they don't um and stuff but then they just go on and they're like cool we're going to the concert yay definitely not gonna have a mystery there um, and then we go back to Frank, and Frank and Joe are getting the message from the DVD, which is so funny to me, because, like, they just put it in, like, their PlayStation and everything, and it's so funny, because, like, it's, it's a CD, and they just pop it in there, and they have, like, production quality. It's like, you know those commercials 
where they have somebody walk out and say things on a blank screen and then they have like concert like not concert costumes and, and like animations and stuff that's what they have <laughs> for this like what is the budget for ATAC to have this <laughs> they they have a whole i i imagine that ATAC has like a whole department at the HQ and they're like yeah. okay okay fellas this is the next video and like somebody's like writing yeah. a script and then like another guy's like setting up the set <laughs> yeah Gotta light I just it. think it's so funny because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like it's described to be like um a silvery flash filled the screen and ear shattering in an ear sh- and the ear shattering scream of an electric guitar poured out the speakers i cast a nervous glance at the bedroom door hoping mom and aunt trudy were still safely downstairs when i looked at the screen again it was filled with smoke a dark figure strode out from the middle of it carrying a microphone he had shaggy dark hair and was wearing leather pants and a mask <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and, and then, then he starts like shredding the air guitar and stuff. And Somebody in ATAC so... was editing this together yeah. and was like, oh, this is the best one yet. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> um, I love it. But yeah, and then they're like, oh yeah, the, the, this... And then it says, like, at the end of their mission statement thing, um... They say, as this usual mission, as usual, this mission is top secret. Good luck and rock on, attackers. The CD will be reformatted in five seconds, and so then it turns into a normal one. And it's and it's like they have like they could have just this could have been an email. <laughs> True. <laughs> this could have been an email <laughs> or a PDF. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. Um, but then they um. Get they say their stuff in the jewel jewel case of the disc that they used, which is in the pizza. I will remind you. Um, and they have two cylindrical silvery objects tucked into the casing, each back uh, the shape of a pack of breath mints. Okay, so so they're like Mentos, but like, how did that fit into the jewel case? I don't know. I that's a big CD case, and that. The pizza must have looked suspicious too, or else that's a thick pizza. Anyway, um, yeah, but then there are many cattle prods, and Joe shocks himself with it because it's Joe. <laughs> yeah. But then they go to the concert and everything. There's a ton of people. Um, Joe is um. A little bit thirsty, and by a little bit, I mean parched. Very. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Frank is like, Joe, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and same, Frank. Um, but yeah, and then we also, like, get a lot more about, like, the concert and stuff. And so the main players in the concert that I hear about uh, th- that are in the books are, like, the metal band Lethal Injection. Or the two main people we know from that are Nick Needles and Mike Manslaughter, which is the funniest term. I really type love of name. the um, alliteration that all of the band members of Lethal Injection yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, um, it's great. Um, and they also wear like really bright face paint and everything, and something that I'm pretty sure would get them in hot water in these days is <laughs> that they they stage a either a murder or a suicide on stage a fake one of course every concert they play yeah which, i was reading um, this and i was I like i think how is that okay I, yeah <laughs> personally me um i would i would i would support them being canceled on twitter like honestly <laughs> i would i would support i would watch four hour youtube deep dives on how problematic this band is <laughs> Your favorite kind of YouTube um, video. My favorite kind of YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. Niche then deep dives. We, yeah. And then we also have, um, what was it? Something punch or something. But, oh, but there's this one. It was the, these Irish dudes who oh, apparently yeah. go around with their instruments on stage, like dancing around like leprechauns. And I'm just like, that is, that is. A little bit stereotypical, but we're going to deal with a lot of stereotypes today. It's a 2007 middle grade book, so. (laughs) True. But um, we also have um, 
the singer Tony Lovely, who is described to look kind of like Bess. Um, and I honestly pictured her as Sabrina Carpenter because I'm working I love late. her. Because I'm, I'm a singer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I that is in my head 24 seven. Um, but I I'm that's who I imagine as Tony Lovely. And then we also have the band Royal We, which are a rock band. And Kajani, the lead singer, is um, seeking asylum from her country in Africa, which she's apparently running from because there was a coup and her parents were almost assassinated and everything. And it's like. Wow, okay, that's a lot. But instead of focusing mostly on that, she focuses mostly on the environment, which I think the writing around Kajani is weird. It's a little bit weird. I think and it's also weird that, like, I don't know. Bit. I feel like if, if my family was going through something like that, I might, like, yeah. take a break from my rock career. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me, I don't know. me too. Um, Oh, that kind of does remind me of this one character in Ace Attorney Apologist, or Apologist is Ace Attorney. The, the, pro the main prosecutor in that game is, he is not only a full-time prosecutor, he's also a full-time rock star, which is kind of giving, Kajani is giving similar vibes to that, but not as unhinged. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but Slay, she's cool. But anyway, so Frank and Joe get there, and they're wandering around, and then they meet these three girls, where one of them is super cute, and Joe is like, hey, babe. And the other ones are like, um, you go away. <laughs> Which, deserved. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, there's a lot more. And then, like, they run into Deirdre again, because Deirdre is there, and she's trying to get backstage with VIP tickets and stuff, and they're not letting her back. And there's this dude, Tyrese, that is in security. He is a reoccurring security guard character, so... We have a lot of reoccurring security guards, actually. Um, but, yeah, and then they're like, Hey, Dee Dee, are you trying to get in? And she's like, um, I'm not trying, I'm going to, because I'm friends <laughs> with Kajani, okay? Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah, there's that, and... All right, so then we, so I know, uh, as we, um, as Deirdre is kind of, like, showing off, and then she, she kind of leaves, and then Nancy notices that a, one of the, like, big dudes in, like, a green shirt, um, which he, he's wearing, like, the same shirt that all of the, the concert staff is wearing, is, like, trying to, like, take Deirdre, and she's, like, struggling against him, so mm -hmm. that's going on. And then we switch back to Joe's point of view. And um, Joe and Frank are like back in the backstage and they're like looking through the trailers. And so they pop into this trailer and inside the trailer are two guys and they one guy is like about to stab the other guy with a knife. So they're like, whoa, stop. And then it turns out that it's two of the lethal injection members and they were practicing their fake death for the show today and oh that's so wild yeah and frank and joe interrupted it and so now they're mad because they're like dude nobody's supposed to see this nobody's supposed to know um, i'm gonna call security and they're like no we we promise we pinky promise that we won't tell anybody and so eventually they sweet talk the guys and they let them go that's just so funny to me. We pinky promise we're not going to tell anybody. Yeah. And so, I mean, they don't actually pinky promise. I just imagine that that's yeah. a tactic that Joe would use. That's the energy. That's the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they leave. Um, and then uh, a, an actual security guy kind of finds them um, and grabs them. And his name is Tyrese. I remember that because yeah, later Tyrese there's a line. <laughs> there's there's a line later in the book that's like really really funny about Tyrese. So I'm mentioning it now. Um, and then he's like, "Oh, where are your backstage passes? The boys can't pr produce any." Um, but then they see Kajani and Joe. You know, is really thirsty. So he's like, "Oh my gosh, she's so incredible and beautiful and." She has a musical accent, and I just, wow. And then, um, she Basically, says something about, like, yeah. Joe's so sweet, and they, like, and Tyrese lets them go. 
Um, which, like, Tyrese is literally just here trying to do his job, okay? Yeah, Tyrese is just, he's struggling, okay? It's let like, the guy do his job. Right, just let the man do his job. Um, so they go back out to the crowd. Um, and the speakers kind of come to life. Um, and then it cuts back to Nancy. Yeah. And Nancy's like, wait, something's happening with Deirdre. And so Nancy spends, like, almost the whole chapter, like, trying to, like, catch this man who's, like, dragging Deirdre away. Yeah. They fin- she finally catches up to him. Um, Deirdre draws the, like, drops the wait till my father hears about this card. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I find really funny. Um, these, like, frat boys, um, take notice of Bess, and then they kind of are like, yo, like, what's going on? You shouldn't treat the lady like this. But, like, also, thank you to the frat boys, I guess. Yeah. And so, the dude, like, lets go of Deirdre, and he turns and runs off. And then, like, the boys are, like, trying to, like, hit on the girls, and they're just, like, not really having it. Um... And then Deirdre's still complaining. She's like, as soon as Kijani hears about this, she'll have that guy fired. And I'm like, okay, Kijani is not your bestie, but go ahead. Okay. Pop off, queen, I guess. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, oh, then, and then, oh, and then we, we get to one of the funniest things, which is the, the host for the concert. They start, uh, they, the concert actually starts and they're like, shout out to your host. Mac Daddy! <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mac Daddy, Mac Daddy so McMillan tired. takes the stage and gets things started. <laughs> oh, it, what if it's that's hilarious. Like, what if... What if... His first name is really Mac, and his middle name is really Daddy? I... I would know... Well, his name is hyphenated, so maybe it's like... You know those names, like... Kelly Ann, or, mm-hmm. you know, those names that always have to do with Ann at the end. Yeah. Um, or, like, Joanna jo. Lynn or something. Yeah, yeah. Mac Daddy. Um, Mac Daddy. That's on his birth Maybe certificate. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, right. so, Frank so- is backstage, and they're... And they don't really know what they're doing at the assignment. They just to look up for suspicious behavior, which is like, you okay? The assignment disc thing could have such amazing production quality with the special effects and the costumes and everything, but they couldn't actually give them details on the mission. Like, come on. Um, and Frank is like, well, I've seen a lot of um. Other illegal acts, like underage drinking, but <laughs> that's not what we're here for. Um, and then he also says, what if this mission is all about ticket scalping? Like, dude, I want ATAC to take down Ticketmaster. <laughs> yeah, that would be so great. That would be amazing! Like, get Frank and Joe to take down, take down Ticketmaster, and that would be awesome. And also scalpers, but, like, Ticketmaster is... The worst. So there we go. True. Um, but yeah, and he announces everything and stuff. And uh, Frank and Joe are still wondering what's going on, just watching the the show with the announcements and everything. And Joe is very distracted by the show. He's like, "Oh, but I want to see it." And Frank is like, "Joe, we're here on a job. We're being wait. Are they being paid to do this? I don't know." They never say. I really hope they're being paid for this. It's <laughs> like, if they're just- if their father is just doing it, that's illegal child labor, because Joe is a minor. <laughs> True. <laughs> Wait, is he? Yeah, he's 17. <gasps> so, Joe is a minor. Joe is- Joe's the baby of this group? Yeah, he is. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's he's the baby. And also the one who's most likely to die first. Mm-hmm. So, um... But... True. <laughs> this is child labor! <laughs> Fenton! What the heck? Um... 
but then we basically have a lot of like uh Kijani talking about her family and stuff and people talking about her family because she was part of the disposed royal family of Erds Erdzania, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a fake country, I think. Um because yeah. I've never <laughs> uh, it's like Genovia, but in Africa, I guess. Yeah. Um and there is a little bit of some racist implications with the writing and everything, but I was reminded by looking at the publication date that it is 2007, so I'm not expecting much with racial sensitivity in 2007, unfortunately, so. But at least it's better than some of the books that came out in the 30s, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but anyway, so we have that, and then we have how her parents were- they barely escaped because the there's a ruthless dictator who staged a coup and took over the country, and so she's talking about that stuff, and also she's talking about, like, saving the environment, but as you said, like, I personally would focus more on, like, hey, my family's- like, about to be murdered and everything, and so, right. like, I think that's pretty important to me. Right. Um, but then after that little thing where he, where they talk about Kajani on the stage, they say, now it's time to hear Tony Lovely! And, yeah, that's my, um, Sabrina I'm Carpenter standing. Cause I'm a singer. Yeah, I love her. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and then we have, um, uh, Joe being, um, ADHD, because, uh, Frank calls him Mr. Short Attention Span, and I just, there is no doubt in my mind that Joe has ADHD. Like, I, I, he is diagnosed in my brain, and he is canonically <laughs> ADHD in every Hardy Boys source material, so, um, in my heart. Um, but yeah, and then they have, like, oh, what goes next? Oh, yeah, they start climbing the speaker tower, um, yeah. and Frank is like, Joe, are you okay? Why are you climbing the speaker tower? And Joe's like, uh, clues. There could be clues up there. And, and Frank is like, well, you got me. Let's go. No arguments there, buddy. No arguments there. They're so funny. Um, but yeah, and then... Switch back to Nancy. Nancy yeah, back to Nancy. Um, Nancy's still really suspicious about what happened with Deirdre, and she, Bess and George are like, what if it's a pickpocket? No, I don't think it's a pickpocket, because usually pickpockets just run away after grabbing stuff and not grab an actual person. Right. Um, yeah, and then, you know, there's creepy dudes at a concert. Wow, that's... So unrealistic. That never happens. Um, and then there's more stuff like that. I think, yeah, and another dude with a scar on his face. Because the other dude had a scar on his face, and this guy has a scar on his face, and they're both wearing green shirts, the neon green security shirts. So, ooh, yikes. And then he goes to the base of the speaker tower. Ooh. And then Nancy goes up. Yeah, she follows. And now up. we have quite a few people up there. Yeah. Um, and so they're like up there in this in the speaker tower, and there's kind of like a little like chase scene and stuff. And and then she runs into the Hardy Boys, and they're all cra and they are crouched on a beam a few feet away, staring back at her. And I, see, I play Assassin's Creed, so I was just like, oh, this is so Assassin's Creed. Like, they're in, um, high-profile mode right now, just going, like, jumping across the beams and swinging on poles and stuff. Like, that was immediately what I was thinking. And first thing Joe thinks is, oh, she's cute! Like, I mean, he is 17 years old, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. oh! Yeah, the, the Irish guys are called the bootstraps. And the bootstraps. <laughs> Again, I apologize to Ireland and like the continent of Africa and metal bands for the um representation in this book. <laughs> Although I do think my sister would listen to Lethal Injection. 
Probably. She probably would. She likes metal music. Shout out to my sister. I love her. Um, but yeah, and <laughs> so Nancy, Frank, and Joe were like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Are you like- It's like the Spider-Man like, meme? Yeah, yes. Yeah, the Spider-Man meme. Yeah, yeah and then Joe the was like, pointing at oh, other. I like- Yeah. So Frank and Nancy are just like, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? And it's like, blah, 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 blah. And Joe was like, oh, this is a nice song. I like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a funky groove. And it's so funny to me. Um, and then they go down, and um, as they're, cr like, crossing the speaker towers and everything, like, they say, Frank, not fr Frank, um, Joe describes her as some kind of demented tarzan et. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is, line made me laugh. That is quite the thing. But the then girl... Well, the whole the whole thing is the girl was a total maniac, swinging from beam yeah. to beam like some kind of demented Tarzanet. Tarzanet, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Joe accidentally introduces him and Frank with their real names because they're supposed to under an alias of Jimmy and John. I think is it Jimmy and John? I don't know. Maybe I'm craving sub sandwiches. I don't know. But um, then. <laughs> um, there. And then Joe is like, oh, yeah, maybe, <gasps> Frank, what if she's with ATAC? And she's like, oh, ATAC? What? You guys, you guys work for ATAC? Oh, my God. It's real. Yeah. And Frank is like, hey, Joe, how about you just shut up? And you know what Joe does? Oh, I just hit my mic. He doesn't you know shut does? up. He, no, he doesn't. And then Bess, and not Bess, Nancy is like, well, my friend George came across it on the internet, and then Bess thinks it's some kind of conspiracy theory. I love and that Frank, Frank is, is like, like, yeah, Bess is Bess right. Is, it's not real. Yeah. <laughs> And then Joe is like, aww. <laughs> and then Nancy's like, oh, really? Cool. Um, and Joe is like, yeah, I, I think I read it on that blog, too. Like, yeah, that's super interesting. Like, oh, who could even think of something like that? And Nancy's like, hmm, okay, then tell me which blog you read it on. Tell me which blog. Do it. <laughs> and, and Joe is like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, but basically, the, the you know they're they're found out, and so they and Nancy decide to team up and do stuff. And then a speaker clashes crashes on the ground, and it blows up. And we're back to Nancy, and she's like, oh, "That's the guy who took Deirdre. I was chasing him." And so they chase after him and stuff. But then Frank is just like. Who are you? And Nancy, um, yeah, she just doesn't answer. She just keeps trying to do stuff. Um, and then jo and then she can't find the guy, so she meets back up with the Hardys, and, uh, Nancy's like, okay, well, my name is Nancy Drew, and Frank is like, you're Nancy Drew? Oh my gosh, Dad showed us articles about you! <laughs> and it's like, wow, this is a small world. Um, but then, yeah, they tell her about the mission and everything, and then they're like, yeah, um, he's definitely a fake guard, and Frank's like, oh, fake guard? And they're like, wait, didn't try to kill you or something? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And then they're like, maybe they're trying to get Nancy. Nancy's like, yeah, maybe. Um, and then they're like, yeah, there's a dude with a scar on his face. Oh! What there's what but we had a dude with a scar on his face, and so it turns out there's two dudes with scars on their faces. And again it's and, like the Spider Man meme. Yeah, more Spider Man meme. There's a lot of that here. Mm -hmm. Um and then we're back to Frank and they're still talking about like who kidnapped Deirdre or tried to kidnap Deirdre. And he's like, I am now very conflicted because I want to work with this girl, but I also am really upset about blowing our cover. Um, which, you know, is fine. Um, but then, yeah, they keep doing investigations and everything, and then Tyrese, the security guard, f finds them backstage, Yo, and he's up, like, Tyrese? you guys aren't supposed to be back here. But then, he sees Bess, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Lovely, I didn't see you there. And so he thinks she's Tony Lovely, and Bess is like, oh, that's okay, I forgot my backstage friends pass, so my friends and I were just going to slip fear here as to not bother anyone. And he's like, oh, no sweat, Miss Lovely. I didn't realize these young men were with you. She's like, oh, no harm done. And so, like, we love Bess. Bess has 
the best Riz in the entire group. Um, <laughs> yeah, she can Riz up anybody. That's, like, Bess's entire thing. Yeah. Um, it's her strength. And apparently she's good with, like, mechanical things as well, I, which I you find out like later. I that, that, like, aspect that they wrote into her, is that, like, what? she's, like, handy. I liked that. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Like, Bess is a cutesy, wootsy little girly girl, but she's also into, like, mechanical stuff and probably yeah. cars. Like, she's a cars girl, but she also, like, wears glitter and hair bows. So I love her so much. Um, but then George and Joe bond over being Lethal Injection fans, and they're like, oh yeah, that's such a good band and stuff, and my sister would, my sister would get along with them. Um, Your sister basically like, is Joe Hardy, so... She is, she is basically Joe Hardy, but a girl, and less likely to jump out of a plane without a parachute. Um, okay, fair. Which, I'm pretty sure Joe would do that. Somehow he would survive, but, um, yeah. And so they <laughs> keep talking to the girls and everything and stuff, and then, uh, Deirdre comes over, and she talks to them, and she starts flirting with the Hardy Boys and stuff, um, especially Frank, but... And Ned, Ned, uh, and Ned. the Ned introduction to the Hardys, too. Yeah, and so, yeah, I'm, there's that. I crack up <laughs> at, um... Frank's description of Ned, which was yeah. this Ned guy looks like the type girls always go for, too. Tall, brown hair, broad shoulders. He could have stepped right out of Hollywood. Joe leaned toward me. Check out Captain America. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah. Oh, and we get a hilarious, not hilarious, but an iconic line from Nancy. So we get this. Nancy slipped up the metal steps without a sound and tried to handle locked she whispered so that made me happy but mm -hmm. that's after they ditch best george and deirdre and the gang and go off snooping more and then they keep going and and nancy and frank i think are caught by a bodyguard which is apparently one of DJ Raz's bodyguards, and DJ Raz, which is a dude playing at the festival, um, apparently ha he had... <laughs> um, it took me... This is what... Um, this is what Nancy says. It took me a second to recognize him as DJ Raz. He had a blue shower cap on his head and a big white bib-type cloth around his, name, <laughs> his neck. And and it's just like Nancy, he's getting his makeup done. And yeah. but like with that description, I imagined him like actually having like a bib on and stuff. <laughs> and like <laughs> I don't know. Like a baby bib or like one of those yeah. like when you go to like, like a, a lobster baby... restaurant and they give you like the plastic. Yeah, bib. Like a baby bib. Okay. But like adult size. <laughs> so like... It's like a giant baby bib. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. But, yeah, but so they get caught by the security people as they're snooping in the backstage area. And um, Frank's like, um, we're really sorry, sir. We're just fans. Um, and the amount of times people are like, oh, you're fans? Okay, then it's okay that you're back here is insane to me. I'm sorry, because, but like, like, if I. If I had fans of me sneaking backstage, I would, like. I would immediately have them escorted out because I'm like, I don't care if you're fans. Sometimes the creepiest people are fans. Leave. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like it's just it's an invasion of I... privacy and it's poor behavior. And you wouldn't yeah. want somebody to follow you into your back room at work or follow you yeah, home no, from work. So like, please gross. don't do that to people who have any sort of fame or yeah. notoriety. It's not cool. No, no, no stalking here. We we are not stalker supporters. We do we do not. We get very no. upset actually yeah yeah <laughs> but then um so he gives uh frank a hat a baseball cap with his logo on it and everything and frank is like oh yeah this is awesome and apparently he's wearing like a polo shirt and stuff and so like this this dj logo cap looks really funny on him which yeah but then they get back to um Joe and everything, and George and Bess and Ned, and Frank gives uh, Joe the cap because he's like, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. That would be like, that would be like my sister getting like 
Taylor Swift's autographed. And I'd be like, oh, that's cool. And she's like, I don't want it. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'd be like, sweet, awesome, that's cool. Um, but then they meet up with the gang and they discuss theories on what happened to what happened to Deirdre. Like, why would they want to grab Deirdre? They have this conversation so many times. Yeah, and I stuff. feel like and- one thing I did not like about this book is I felt like it it padded out and there's really only, like, a few significant events. And I feel like everything is so padded out in this book that it was really, really difficult for me to, like... I don't know. It felt like the momentum was constantly being, like, slowed down. Because we were just doing the same thing again. Yeah, it's it like, was a lot of repetition. <clears throat> it's a lot of, like, we're wandering around. Oh, let's go to this backstage area that we were we were already at, and we'll wander around. Oh, we'll go onto the into the like rafters again and wander around. Oh, let's go back out into the crowd and wander around. And it was just like the same thing over and over. Yeah. And so we do some more of that, and Lethal Injection are performing and everything, and then yeah. And so there's more of that, and Nancy, like, tags along with the Hardy Boys, and she's like, oh, I just want to know more about this stuff, and then they're both like, no, she's up to something, um, because it's Nancy, she's always up to something. Um, but yeah, they keep doing the same thing. Um, Joe calls Frank a dweeb, um, which I will say is accurate. Um, yeah, and then they keep... Just doing like the same thing where there's more concert stuff, and they're like, "What do we? What if we snoop here? Um, what is the Nancy Drew Hardy voice thing without snooping?" Um, True. And then they try to go backstage again, I think. Yeah. Um, but they realize there's a lot more security, so they can't really do that. Um, uh, yeah, there's more music. More snooping. More climbing. <laughs> yep. I was just about to say, um, in and chapter then, 13, well, they go back, climbing across the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> more Assassin's Creed stuff. Um, but then, um, when they're climbing and stuff, um, they're in the stage area, and the speaker falls, or was it a speaker or a light? Um, it was a light, and it fell down, and George had to tackle one of the lethal injection members, Nick Needles, to keep him from getting... Uh, killed by the, um, the light, and so, and Nancy is immediately, like, like, oh, this is an, att- this is an attempted murder, um, yeah. obviously, and those two scar guys are behind it, um, and then, um, the lead singer of Royal Wee, Kajani, comes back, comes over, and she's like, oh my gosh, I have to go to help him, I have to go see him, and, um, apparently there were tabloid magazines at best had been men- mentioning that said that Kajani and Nick were dating and apparently they're true and everything so um Nick has now been um targeted and everybody's like freaking out over that because you know um murder is kind right. of a serious thing especially um when it, there's like a lot of witnesses because there were a lot of witnesses but people all thought that that was the staged murder <laughs> on the stage yeah so the audience like, was like, ah! yeah, that's fun. But then they need a quiet place to go and to reconvene and to go over all their information and stuff. And so Frank takes everybody to the porta potties. And he's like, well, this is the most quiet place. So and then- you know what I was thinking during this whole time <laughs> was that there was probably some poor soul sitting in a porta potty yeah! doing their business. And hearing all of this talk right outside of their porta potty. Because those yeah. things, like, you can hear everything. Yeah. Literally everything. But eventually says, Oh, I gotta I gotta go pee. I gotta go. Um, see you later, guys. And and then he calls Joe and he's like, Joe, you gotta you gotta gotta ditch them, okay? We gotta do this thing on our own. And Joe says, Oh, I gotta get I gotta get um I gotta get Frank out of the, uh, the porta potty, you know, he gets stuck in there sometimes. <laughs> like, this is so hardy, boys. Uh-huh. But then, the boys, they sneak off, leave the girls with the toilets, which, I'm just gonna say it, misogyny, um, 
check your misogyny, boys. Don't just ditch girls in the toilets. Not um, in the toilets. By <laughs> the toilets. But then they deal with um, mystery security guards there, and then it turns out it is not one of the Scarface dudes. It is Tyrese. And Tyrese is like, you two idiots. And so he just Tyrese grabs them. He's like, having the okay, worst we're go. Work day of his life. Oh yeah, poor Tyrese. He needs a raise. Um, but then mm-hmm. Nancy, Bess, and George are like, dang it, they 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 abandoned us. Um, and then they look back to like the concert screen and stuff. Um, and then they're like. Where is, like, all this stuff happening? And then George is like, wait, isn't that Deirdre on the big screen? And, um... And then it's interviews with fa- with well fans and people who know the band members. And Deirdre somehow got onto the screen to, um... Do all that stuff. Cause, and cause they call the editing ADHD besties. style, so... <laughs> and then we have more stuff. Um, we have more Mac Daddy saying things on the stage. Um, and then we have, um, Ned talking with Deirdre, and she's like, Oh my gosh, they bitched my interview! And Ned is like, Oh, well, I don't know what to say! Um, and he, and Ned is kind of freaking out a bit, because he was supposed to interview Kajani, um, and she, and she wasn't there, and then she's, like, super late to the interview, and she's like, Sorry I'm late, Ned! Um... I'm so I'm sorry, Mr. Nickerson. And then he and then like he interviews her and stuff. And um, she talks about like her country being taken over by the coup and stuff. And like crazy killer dudes. And then eventually they they notice Deirdre got pulled away by the security guard again. Um, and now they're pretty sure that she is actually kidnapped. So yeah. Yay! Kidnapping! Actual kidnapping. Yay! <laughs> Poor Deirdre, honestly. They do hate on Deirdre a lot in this. Where they're like, ah, Deirdre's just so annoying. I'm like, yeah, she's annoying, but I don't think she deserves being kidnapped. You know what I mean? Yeah, even the most annoying really? person does not deserve crime against them. It's not a crime yeah. to be annoying, so I don't think she deserves a crime in return. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And so then, um, yeah, we get more concert and being like, what's going on? Um, we have some banter. What's happening with Deirdre? We can't find her. And so they go looking for, like, Deirdre and everything. And, um, Nancy does have sympathy for Deirdre and everything. George doesn't, um. (laughs) But then, um. Let her, let her go. I don't care. Yeah, but apparently um, Deirdre also has a lawyer dad, so more Deirdre and Nancy parallels. Um, yeah, I, I love think those. they mentioned that in a couple of the games. Yeah. Um, but then they talk about, like, what accent did the security guards have? And there's only three characters here mentioned with an accent, um, other than just spelling out the British accent, which I hate. Um <laughs> Or they mentioned the Johnny, and these guys had the same accent, so hmm, suspicious. Um, and then they, and then with the concert, there starts to be like a bunch of like technical difficulties, and then they're like, oh no, what's that on the screen? And it's Deirdre, and she looks awful. She's crying. She's got makeup like streaked everywhere, and she's like, please, somebody tell Johnny she has to come to to the stage right now because they're gonna kill me. Um, and so Deirdre is now being held hostage because they think she's Kajani's bestie, and Kajani's like, I do not know her, um, but you know the Scar Dudes? They were two of the people called the Death Brothers. Great name, by the way. <laughs> it's, like, as a kid, um, when I would read this, the the name of the Death Brothers reminding me of the Stabbington Brothers from <laughs> Tangled. Um, from what? Because, like... You know, you know, Entangled, how they're the two oh, redhead yes. twins that okay. have scars. Yeah, 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 it's it's the same energy. Um, they're two brothers with the Death Brothers and the Stabbington Brothers. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know my Tangled lore. Okay, um, but then she tells them about um, the dictator who took over with the coup and how these people were these two guys were like his head honcho dudes, and then. Um, so, Johnny is the real target, they want to 
kill her and everything, and um, also get her to tell her tell them where her parents are so they can kill hit her, them too. And um, then they go up to try to rescue Deirdre, and they see in the screens that she has wires in her arms, so they're gonna freaking electrocute Deirdre. And then Frank is like, oh, uh, I don't like this. Um, and then they go over to save Deirdre, and then there is the Death Brothers there to stop them. Oh no, I just cannot get over the Death Brothers. Like, that is so on the nose. Um, <laughs> like, is it like a title? Or are they like, is it their actual legal name? I I feel like it's probably a nickname. <laughs> That's just my assumption. I just but. think it's funny, though. Like, hello, Mr. Death and Mr. Death. I don't know. It, it's funny to me. Um, but then Nancy basically says, like, like, grabs a microphone and stuff, and she's like, I want to trade myself for Deirdre. I want I Deirdre to... I volunteer as tribute! Yeah, basically. And Deirdre's like, ah! <laughs> no! Um, because, like, you know, she's kidnapped and about to be murdered. Um... Yeah, and then the Death Brothers are like, you know what? How about we take both of you hostage? And so now we have two hostages, and then we have Frank and Joe. Um, and then Frank and Joe come, and they're like, well, if two hostages are better than one, four must be better yet. So now they have four hostages. Huzzah. Um, but then um, two is Frank better is than one, to four is better down. than two, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Frank is trying to talk them down and get them monologuing. You know, he's got high speech points, I guess. Um, <laughs> low charisma, high speech. Um, Joe has high charisma, low speech. Um, I'm talking Bess video games. Bess has high here. charisma, high speech. Bess is, like, yeah, she's high with both of those. Low stamina um, stats. Low stamina, but high at high that. Um, but then, um... Yeah, Deirdre is freaking out because, you know, she's about to be murdered. And she's like, oh my god, Nancy, help, please. Um, and then they st the, s the speakers start to crackle and stuff. And Frank is, like, oddly calm at this point, And he just puts in a pair of earplugs. And Nancy's like, why is he putting in earplugs? And then, like, the static starts going crazy. Everybody's, like, writhing on the ground because it's so hard and loud and everything. And so... Frank takes the guns from the thugs because they drop them because, you know, they're writhing on the ground and he pushes them over and then, um, basically, yeah, that's it. And the guys are taken and they're arrested and everything because they saved the day. They can't really defend themselves when they're writhing on the floor and Frank's got everything set and he has, like, the guns and stuff. And apparently that's because um, he threatened to Joe that he would put in earplugs during the lethal injection thing because there's a bunch of studies that people can experience he hearing loss at concerts, which is true. And Frank is so real for putting in earplugs at a concert. True. Um, but yeah, basically that ears. happened. Yeah, and Bess um, was the one who fixed the speakers and stuff. Um, or no, George fixed the speakers, but, um, George, uh, George fixed the speakers, but Bess is the one who messed with the electrical system to get it to do what they want to do and to keep George safe, so... To keep yay, Bess! George safe. I love Bess. Um, but yeah, and then Kijani's safe, she finishes the concert, Bess is cool, George is cool, George is cool, but George wants to insult her more, which... Let the girl have a break. She just got kidnapped and attempted murdered. Um, and then, uh, we have Joe, who's like, Yeah, we're gonna boogie! <laughs> and, and Frank is like, You know what? Might as well. And then he says this to Joe, Hey, you're not the only one who can appreciate a hot tune, you know? <laughs> and then they all think he's super weird because he said hot tune, and I'm just like, yeah, Everybody's here is weird, but, um... Basically, they finish the concert, everybody's happily ever after, except the Scar guys, the end. That's it. So, that's that's it! It's fun, it's wild, um... <laughs> it's, I think it's it's genuinely funny, and I don't know if it's supposed it is, to be yeah. genuinely funny, I think, but I it think is it is really supposed funny. to be in some parts. 
But, like, also it's a middle grade book, so yeah. I'm not expecting it to be too serious. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and it was funny with, like, I just love the dynamic between the two Hardy Boys, how they are, and uh -huh. how they also acknowledge how insane Nancy is. Because they're like, yeah, we're crossing the rafters, but, we're, you know, we're being careful about it. And then Nancy's just, like, swinging across everything, and they're like, what is she doing? Which, uh -huh. you know, weird parkour is not unusual for Nancy Drew, as we have experienced in Tomb of the Lost Queen and The say. Silent Spy. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Or even things but yeah. like um, Treasure in a Royal Tower. I mean, she, like, pulls herself up from the elevator. Yeah, that too. Like, Nancy just does a lot of weird, um, weird parkour, which, honestly, I support her for that. Um, but, yeah, so, what do we, what do we want to talk about? Okay, so we have the plot and the mystery, we talked about that, the characters and the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Um, the characters and the dialogue were very 2007 <laughs> I found a lot of the dialogue really funny. Like, a it lot was of it funny, stuck yeah. in my head, you know? Yeah. Like, check I out love... Captain America. I think I'm gonna remember yeah. that for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, I- well, I mean, I did, so, um, but I also remember, like, how awkward Frank is at, like, literally every time where he has to, like, talk to people that isn't- where it relies on charisma and not logic- um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> High intelligence, low charisma stats there. Yeah. Um, we still love Frank, though. Yeah. I love Frank, yeah. But, um, and then, uh, the atmosphere and the setting. Um, it was weird. The I atmosphere think, and the setting. Yeah, I think it's hard. It's hard to do a mystery that feels, I don't know, like mysterious when I you're in a crowded, yeah. loud atmosphere. Yeah. You know what I and mean? so. Yeah, so that kind of made it weird. Um, also, with everybody sneaking backstage and be like, "Oh, you're a fan. That's okay." And I'm just like, "Stop it!" Yeah, please, no. That's that, not that real will life. get you. That could also get you arrested. I hope. I feel um, like it could have. That could be like poor um, behavior modeled for a young reader. And they're like, "Oh, yeah. so <laughs> if I." Go if to... I'm solving a mystery, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, if I if I go to the Taylor Swift concert, I can sneak backstage. <laughs> Please do not. Don't. Please allow them some space. Um, but, yeah, so that's it. This is a shorter episode, but what would you rank... Uh, what would you rate this episode? Uh, we're, like, on a good read score of, like, one star to five stars. I actually did rate this on Goodreads. Let me oh, see you did? did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me see if I rated it. No, I just read it. Um, okay, I rated it. I don't remember. I rated it three stars, and I think it was because yeah, I think I'll rate it that too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely not a great book, but it was sure as heck entertaining. Yeah, it kept <laughs> my focus. It was funny, and yeah, for a middle grade I, book. And I think it was the perfect length for how um, not in depth it was. It at least it wasn't like a very long book. Like they didn't try to stretch yeah. this into four hundred pages or whatever. Yeah. Oh god, that would be awful. But it it was still a bit bloated in places. It was. Yeah. It was super rip. Super repetitive. Um, I don't think the other books in the Super Mystery series are as repetitive. Um, the but I know this one sure I've read I thought were much better. Yeah, but anyway, that was, it was fun. Was it a great book? No, but it was funny and campy, so mm -hmm. there we go. So Perfect. I guess that's that. Um, but we do, af at the end of this episode, um, we do have a bit of an announcement. So we're going to take just a very short little summer break. Um, Ray and I are both pretty busy and we have a lot going on in our lives and just to help us avoid any feelings of like burnout we're just going to take like a little bit of a breather so we will not be having any releases in July but we will be back um, on August 11th um, with our next episode. Uh, so enjoy your summer breaks um, if you guys are vacationing or out of school or whatever you might be up to. I hope it's yeah. lovely and we will see yes. you soon. It's only, we're really only taking two episodes off. Yeah, like, so it'll be, we'll be back be before you know it. Yeah. 
But anyway, thank you, goodbye, and stay sleuthy, and follow us on all of our platforms. Okay, bye bye! Tumblr, you said. Yeah! Okay, yeah. Bye! Bye! <laughs> <laughs>